ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is Dramaside for Dramaside TV. We are back once again to pay our respects to a legend who has left us, one Sinead O'Connor, who has left us at the age of 56. Um, there's so much that I could say, and I will say, but first, I think we should listen to her say it herself. issue came up recently or got a lot of attention recently when you tried to give some advice to Miley Cyrus and the initial letter that you wrote the topic of the way the music business prostitutes young female artists was part of that letter and I was wondering if there was a moment in your own life where you learned that the music business was not on your side and that you had to oh you know it yourself. every single day of your life the music business is a corrupt a spiritually corrupt arena it's full of nothing but vampires and pimps honestly and you couldn't understand it if you, unless you were in it. And the only way to survive it is love music. Um, so I've known it all along. But I think what was more important, really, that, that came out of the Miley thing was this, this issue of com being able to now conversate about, you know, how mental health and, and human rights is now. So I think she was actually very helpful. I think the two of us, without meaning to, did quite a good job in terms of creating the conversation about something really, really important, you know. So you mentioned you're, you know, you're so outspoken about uh, the way that we talk about mental illness. And mm. how do you feel that your message is being received by people? Well, it's not a question of my message. I think, I think uh, it's a general world message now. My particular um, grief, if you like, is with uh, the media in particular, that I think how the media discuss and portray and diagnose, indeed, without qualification, um, mental health or mental illness is, is a human rights issue. Um, I'll give you just one example. Um, what, uh, there's a dreadful practice going on in this country at the moment, which is a complete breach of human and civil rights. Uh, paparazzi lynching is what I call it. Young celebrities, young female celebrities, whether it's Britney or Amanda Bynes or, or Lindsay Lohan or anyone who has either been diagnosed with an illness or is perceived by people to have a mental illness. Um, lynching them in the streets, trying to get photos of them looking like they're having breakdowns, taking these pictures, selling them for tons of money in the newspapers, with, with derogatory words written under them about mental illness and about these women, and making a buffoonery and a mockery of them. Now that's obviously extremely wounding and dangerous for those young women, uh, because it doesn't stay on the page or stay on the screen, it translates down into how people that treat you in your life. Unfortunately, there's such a stigma about mental illness or perceived mental illness that people are bullied and treated like sh frankly, and the illnesses are used as something with which to beat people um, in a manner that a physical illness wouldn't be. You couldn't go lynching with paparazzi girls who had broken legs and start writing about, you know, aren't these dreadful, awful people, let's have a great laugh at them because they have a broken leg. So what's the role of religion in your life today? Uh, I am interested in the study of all religions. I've always been interested in studying religion, but I see religion and God as two separate things. So I guess I see music as a priesthood, that that would be how I relate to, you know, what's the way to put it? I, I would have a very strong relationship with what I prefer to call the Holy Spirit because it lifts it from any um, particular religion. What do you think of the new Pope? I, I, I'm, no, I'm not interested so much in all of that anymore because the, the well, the appropriate thing took place, which was that the other guy resigned. So I don't really have to take any more interest in it. As far as I know, this dude has, the new dude has nothing to do with covering up very important things. So I don't concern myself. Wow. You know, in some people's eyes, she'll only be remembered for nothing compares to you or ripping up the picture of the Pope on Saturday Night Live. This video in itself shows you and tells you that she was much, much more than that. She understood what this business was and is. But moreover, she understood what the media will do 
to celebrities, to normal civilians, just to anybody looking for a story. They'll stop at nothing to destroy you if that's what it means um, to get the, the next big lick, the next big story, the first one on the scene, you know. She was ostracized a lot after that incident on Saturday Night Live, and I didn't hear much of her as much uh, after that. And it's really sad because from all accounts, not just this interview, but anything that I've ever read about her as for as much as they like to say that she was crazy or she was this or she was that, she cared. You don't get that that much just in, in this life anymore the clout chasers, the people looking to offend more than they are looking to create beauty. I know when I was younger and I started writing music, I wanted to get back at those that did me wrong and did me dirty. It's always about revenge. Now it's just about healing. It's about truth. It's about what's real. And so I know that I don't fit into a lot of situations or a lot of spaces, and that's fine. And it seemed like she took it well, too. And I'm pleased, by no means am I putting myself in a category with the great Sinead O'Connor. That's not what I was saying. But I learned a lot from her, is what I will say. Uh, her courage, her determination, her, her her strength to stand on what she said and stand on her beliefs, that's it's amazing. And I love that about her. So rest in peace, Sinead O'Connor.